All right, we're out here at Extreme Couture. Cool spot. A uh, guy who um, I think people are, uh, I was going to say split. I don't. Right now, I don't think Junie Browning's a split guy. He may be down the road. I think you're probably pretty vilified um, out there. What do you think? I mean, you're about halfway through the uh, season. You're still on the show. Um, but with some of the antics so far, uh, you're not a well-regarded guy. Um, yeah, um, I'm not uh, too surprised by everyone's reactions. Um, I, I sort of assumed everyone was going to be, uh, you know, looking at me like I'm the villain. Um, it's cool with me. I don't mind being the bad guy. It's, at least it's a little more entertaining. I mean, I'm not saram wrapping people's underwear and stuff, but, you know, I'm sorry I can't be as lame as them. So when you watch each week, what do you think? I mean, has there been a, a ton of moments where you're like, God, that was really embarrassing? You're like, hey, it happened. That's me. What are your thoughts? Um, you know what I mean? Um, Half the stuff I did, I don't even remember because most of the nights were uh, a drunken blur. But, uh, you know, it, what's done is done. Uh, I can't really take anything back. So at least I'm entertained. That's the way I look at it now. Uh, there ain't too much, you know, positive things that come from it. But, you know, at least the ratings are up. <laughs> we've, uh, we've had a lot of fighters uh, who were on the show in the past and, and uh, you know, bigger name UFC fighters say, you know what, one of the things they need to do is get the alcohol out of the house. There's obviously a reason for it because they want stuff like this to happen within reason. What do you think? Now that you went through it, it was so tempting. You already have, I'm, I'm assuming, a, you know, some drinking issues coming in, um, and it's just a recipe for disaster. So looking back on it, uh, is it worth it for the show? Does it, does it make the, the whole sport come off badly? And uh, do you feel like almost like you're maybe being used and victimized? Um, no, um, I don't feel like um, I'm really being used or anything. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't think the show would be as entertaining. You know, I think the show isn't really necessarily directed towards uh, people that are already MMA fans and stuff because they're going to be fans regardless. I think it's uh, directed uh, towards uh, more of the general population, and I think people that don't understand MMA as much, you know, they don't understand the moves and stuff. They, they probably want to see the drama more in the house and stuff, and, uh, you know, I gave them that. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, if it wasn't for the alcohol, I mean, we'd be sitting around on the couch talking about the economy and stuff, and no one wants to see that. <laughs> All right, so you're now here in Vegas. We're at Extreme Couture. Um, why Vegas? Obviously, the gym is incredibly tempting. Uh, how do you, first of all, how do you get to a place like Extreme Couture? I mean, it's not like uh, any fighter is invited. I mean, do you make a plea to them? Do they come after you? Uh, actually, uh, I signed with a, a management company called Denaro Sports, and um, you know, I just told them I'm, I wanted to step up my training stuff, so they invited me to come out here, and uh, they talked to Sean Tompkins, uh, you know, and he, uh, Sean invited me out here to stay with him and train out here. And, uh, you know, you can't really get much better training than this. Uh, you got some of the best lightweights there are in the world, and in order to be the best, you got to train with the best, you know. Everyone knows that. So. All right, so what's it like being in Vegas? Well, with all the stuff we see on the show and, you know, people are claiming you're bipolar and uh, obviously you're up and down and, you know, probably not the, the best drinker at times. And this is – I've lived here for uh, 12 years. It's – you know, you can get into trouble here. So how are you dealing with that? Uh, I think people get the wrong, uh, you know, interpretation of me. I think uh, people think the way I act in the house and stuff is the way I act all the time. Um, but I take training real seriously and stuff. And uh, – Actually, since I've been here, out here in Vegas, I haven't even been out once. You know, everyone was real surprised when they heard I was coming out here because, uh, you know, the limited supply of alcohol and, you know, as much stuff there is to do out here. But I haven't even been out once. And the only thing I've been drinking is water since I've been out here. You know, after all the shit talking I was doing on the show, I had to back it up. So, you know, I live in the gym now. Yeah. All right, well, let's close on this because um, people have been really critical. I've been one of them up on the Yahoo blog and, and on the air. I talked to Dana White after a lot of the fights, and I actually said to Dana before UFC 90, I'm like, frankly, I, I don't know why Junie's on the show. Um, I think it, it sets a bad example. I think he could turn out to be like a Jesse Taylor who just turned out to be a total disaster. So how do you react to someone like me without you know, wanting to punch me in the face um, and, and people who have been really critical? That, that, you know, just saying, hey, this guy doesn't even deserve a, a second chance or a third chance. Get rid of him. Uh, I actually understand where people are coming from. I mean, when I watched the show, I, I was watching it as if, you know, it wasn't me on there. And I was, uh, you know, basically going through the same thing. At certain points of the show, I'd be like, damn, they should really kick that asshole out of there. And then I realized it was me. So uh, Wait, now, were you drinking when you were forgetting that it was you? or what? what no. How do you forget that it's you? I get your point, though. Um, you know, I understand where people are coming from. Um, but the difference between me and, like, Jesse Taylor and uh, a few other guys is uh, I can fight. And a lot of those other guys don't have the talent. I think Dana's seen uh, 
you know, seen something in me that a lot of the other guys didn't have is talent. So he didn't, you know, he knew if I was, got kicked off the show or something along the lines of that, um, it would basically ruin my future. And, um, you know, he, I think he understands I really do have a future in fighting. And the house, he didn't want the house to, you know, ruin that for me. He actually said one of the things he was worried about is you getting kicked off the show and then saying, oh, I could have beat everyone on the show. So he said, screw it. Now I'm going to make him go on the show, have to go through this and prove himself so I don't have to hear that he would have beaten everyone on the show, had to kick them off. And, you know, part of what I think he was saying, too, is that uh, he's getting a little more compassionate in his old age and that, uh, you know, he's seen a guy like Chris Lieben, which, you know, it figures now he just tested positive for steroids, but Lieben kind of turned his life around and maybe that could be something that he and UFC helps you do. Uh, definitely. I, I mean, I think just... Uh, you know, getting off the show and stuff and seeing the opportunity I have, uh, uh, it's definitely going to help change my life. I mean, if it wasn't for the show and stuff, I don't think I would have made the the change to move out here and, you know, take training a little more seriously and just fighting in general. You know, the thing people don't understand is I only had two professional fights. Uh, you know, I'm still a rookie in the game, and the show is about up and comers. It's not necessarily, you know, you're not necessarily the UFC champ right off the bat. And, um, you know, I've learned a lot, and I still have a lot to learn, but uh, that's why I'm out here. All right, good deal. I expect no more antics on the show, right? That's it. No, there's no more crazy Junie moments? There probably are. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't necessarily say that. I mean, you'll be entertained. I mean, nothing's going to be as bad as the first few episodes. But, uh, you know, I'm still Junie. And I, I still show that on the show. Well, you know what? There is a home for you in pro wrestling because uh, I've never seen a guy jump into an octagon before, but you must have a 75-inch vertical leap. That was good. <laughs> you know, trying to bring the athleticism to MMA. <laughs>